Hey guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel. So today we're doing some learning. <laughs> wash my hands <laughs> about two years ago so 2019 before the world like completely lost its shit I filmed a video for my valves I never edited and uploaded it because honestly it was completely disjointed but there's still lots of people buying old four drives this is a job you can kind of do at home and do yourself and that's the joy I think of owning old cars we get to teach ourselves these things even though they kind of aren't applicable to the modern world but that's fine <laughs> okay this is our learning hairstyle. This is how we learn. <laughs> Pay attention. Fuck. <laughs> no, seriously. Please, all the experts out there, don't come for me. I'm gonna try and break this down with the bare minimum of what you need to know. Valve adjustment is something that eventually, I believe, will be very phased out in the same way that carburetors and distributors are not really a thing taught these days. Now, the, the valve clearance is kept in spec by hydraulic adjusters and all sorts of new technology. So I'm going to talk about diesel six cylinders because that's what I'm going to be doing the valves on today. So we'll just keep it simple. So a diesel engine has four cycles. You have your intake, compression, power, and exhaust. So these are your four cycles that all your pistons go through in their cylinder. I've already run out of room. This is your cylinder. so bad so this is one cylinder this is your crankshaft so your crankshaft is spinning connected to a connecting rod which is connected to your piston piston is traveling up and down as the crankshaft rotates hello are you here to learn and then at the top again this is just generic two valves intake and exhaust I'll use a 12 HT as an example. You have a follower and then you have a push rod which goes to your camshaft. This is a terrible drawing that's in like five different planes right now. I'll put a better image here. Pretty much there's an adjusting nut. So up here is what we're adjusting and then we measure this gap. So I'll just go through the engine cycle so that you guys can get an idea of what the valves are doing, why they're doing things. On your intake stroke, your piston is traveling down. When that happens, the intake valve is opened and air is coming into the cylinder. Now you've got a cylinder full of air, piston's at the bottom, and then it'll start compression. The intake valve must be closed and your piston starts traveling up, compressing the air. Fuel is injected. So now you have a fuel air mixture. Big explosion. It pushes the piston down. That's your power stroke. Once the piston starts traveling back up, the exhaust valve opens. Leftover burnt gases are all exited out the exhaust valve. Done. That is a very broad overview of a diesel engine cycle. There's a lot more to it. That explains to you why the valves are important because they have to be closed at particular times and they have to be open at particular times. So why do we need a clearance? What's valve clearance? Why are we adjusting it? So the 1HZ has a bucket shim type. Let's draw a diagram. That's a cam lobe. The 1HZ is an overhead cam engine, single overhead cam. So the cam pretty much acts directly on the valves. As the cam rotates, it pushes down on the shim in this bucket and then opens and closes the valves. 12HT is similar to this. So you have a cam is down in the engine. The cam is turning. When it gets to this pointy part, it pushes the rod up, acts on the rocker arm and opens the valve. So it's like a seesaw pretty much. So why do we have this clearance gap? Why, why things get hot in an engine? Everything heats up. And if you had no gap, when all of this got hot and the engine was at operating temperature, everything would expand. When metal gets hot, it expands. This valve would not be in its seat and you'll have this gap. 
or air to escape. That's why we have a valve clearance. What is this? Are you judging uh, my my diagram? No, that's fine. Okay. So I squeeze bang but You don't want engines don't suck. Thank they you very displace. much. <laughs> they just the place. air just falls in. It just displaces. It just falls in. <laughs> You would do your valves if you noticed a drop in performance or um, blowing a lot of smoke, anything like that, or just for a general tune up to just sort of bring everything back to spec. But unless something majorly fails in the valve train, it's not gonna be a very drastic change. Each engine configuration will have its own injection order. So you probably will hear me say on the rock quite frequently, it basically means we're at the end of our exhaust strokes. All the exhaust gases have left, the piston's at the top. It's gonna start going back to the start and going down, which means the intake valve is opening to draw more air in. So it's like the overlap of the valves. It just means that, yeah, we can't adjust those valves. That's all you really need to know. Okay, I think that's probably explained enough. <laughs> Without further ado, let's rewind the clock to before all of this stuff happened in the world. Good morning guys, so today I need to do my valve clearances. Valve clearances on 18Zs are not the same as what most are. So 18Zs, they have shims. I've got the measurements of what they should be, so we'll measure if they're good don't touch them. <laughs> if they're out, we're just gonna write that number down. I've got a special tool and it holds the camshaft and pushes the valve down so you can take out the shim. Measure the shim and then do some quick math and figure out what size shim you need to make that clearance up to the correct clearance. It's all very complicated. I mean, it's not that complicated, but it's a lot more complicated than a ring spanner and a screwdriver, so. Hmm. And the downside is to buy a whole kit, heaps of shims, is a lot of money. So you kind of just want to buy the shims you need. So you've got to do all this work, then you've got to write down the shims you need and then order them and then wait and then do this all again. Fun times. Most crankshafts will have a top dead center mark so you can line that up with some point of reference which will be in your manual. Otherwise just have a good look. It's normally like a pointer and then just a line grooved into the crankshaft. So once the rock covers off, figure out where in the engine cycle it is. So you need to know what your firing order is. So it's one, four, two, six, three, five. The only way that I've remembered it is 14, too young, 35, too old, and in the middle, 26, just right. I'm 26, so that's why that is. I've just got a ratchet on the crankshaft bolt. So cylinder one, inlet exhaust, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so that's the exhaust. And that's the inlet going down. So they're on the rock. Check which ones we got loose. So number two, inlet, number three, exhaust, four, inlet, five exhaust and you should be able to do both a six so when six valves are on the rock you should be able to do both a one all right i'm not sure if that made it sound way more complicated than it had to be got feeler gauges the specs will also be in your manual but mine are conveniently on the side of my air box. valve clearance for the intake is 0.15 to 0.25 and 0.25 shouldn't fit if it just fits, then that's right, but you're on the upper end of that scale, so you probably want to come down to 0.24. All right, so number two inlet we can do. Put them in there. There we go. And cylinder six inlet is 0.1. Now we do exhaust, so exhaust spec is 0.35 to 0.45. Cylinder 6 exhaust was 0.31, so the minimum spec is 0.35, so she's under as well. When you're sort of feeling it, everyone is different. You don't want it to be too loose, like the next size up shouldn't fit, but then it shouldn't be so tight that it doesn't get out. It's sort of like a smooth drag. You just develop your own sort of feel about what you accept, and as long as sort of they're all the same. Alright, what else? Cylinder 
five exhaust. Okay, so that is all those done. So that's just what I've written. Written all the numbers down. Now we're going to wind it over and do the other side now. Now we just do that all again. <laughs> Alright, so worst one so far is exhaust on cylinder one is 0 0.26. The minimum it's supposed to be is 0 0.35. Alright, inlet. Cylinder one is so bad. Inlet's 0 0.09, the minimum is supposed to be 0 0.15. Alright, I had to change the shirt because it's getting hot. Push down the cam folder so we can get out the shim. Alright, so now that we've got the oh. hop, now that we've got all our measurements, can you even see that? I can understand it. I've just written down what our inlet and exhaust feeler gauge measurements were for each cylinder, and then written down next to that the shims, so what the ones in there at the moment measure at. And I'll put the formula up on the screen, so all it is to work out what shim you need to put in, you get your valve measurement and minus what you want it to be. So I went in the middle for the inlet between 0.15 and 0.25 is 0.2 and for the exhaust between 0.35 and 0.45 is 0.4. So I'll do an example calculation here. So our inlet filler gauge measurement was 0.09 and we want it to be about 0.2. So that's somewhere in between our tolerances. So we minus 0 0.2 and then we plus the shim. So the shim was 2.81, 2.81, 2 2.7. So I've written, yeah, I can, I can read it, 2.7 shim. And that will make that 0.2. Now, I'm just gonna order some shims. Alrighty guys, so that is kind of all I filmed at that point. Pretty much just the reverse of what I did originally. Take the shim out and put the correct size back in and then obviously bolt all the intake and everything back on. Now that we've done the most complicated valve clearance method, it's not, but it is. Like, there's math, so that makes it complicated straight up. So now we're gonna go do the 12 HT, which is uh, much simpler. And a mozzie boy. I'm just, I'm just laying here. Okay, it is significantly later, but I got carried away. So it's like seven o'clock at night. Anyway, so 12 HT is here. Look at what he's did to my shirt. Sorry, Sam, got dirt on my shirt. Because the engine's out, you can see a lot more, so you'll be able to see the timing marks, and I'll be able to show you the rocking action that I was trying to tell you guys about. This here is the timing mark, and then that little white line is on the pulley for the crank. So you line those up. So I've already kind of half started, but this, this is pretty much what you need. Screwdriver, spanner, this is a 12 mil, and filler gauges. With that timing mark lined up, you can come up here and check that number one is loose and number six is tight. So that means that cylinder six is rocking. So if I were to turn the crank, you'll see these two rocker arms alternating. So this is an 8 thou or 
0.20 millimeters. So this is what the inlet uh, spec is for the 12HT. And then the exhaust is a 14 thou and 0.36 mil. So whichever you prefer to work in, Imperial or metric, this only has one spec as opposed to the 1HZ with the shims. It had an upper and a lower adjustment. This one, I'm going to start at 0.2, adjust it pretty much until I'm happy with that it's at 0.2 exactly. All right. This is your adjusting screw and this is your locking nut. So you have to undo the locking nut, turn the adjusting screw clockwise to tighten. Your feeler gauge goes in between the rocker arm and your valve stem. Slight drag. It's not strenuous to pull it through. It doesn't feel slimy. You can just feel a slight drag on the feeler gauge. My feel that's too loose. So now it's loosened. You want to wind clockwise to tighten. Just a little bit so that that little turn already has got more drag there. You want to try and keep your feeler gauge as flat as possible. Once you're happy with it, you don't want to remove this adjusting screw. So keep in mind if you can't hold that still when you tighten up the outside locking nut, it's going to turn a little bit. And just double check. Happy with that. So I'll keep my point two out and do all the inlets and then I'll swap over and do the exhausts and then we'll rotate the crank and do all the ones that we left out. A few little tips, make sure that your feeler gauges are clean and what I normally do is I go, I put in the limit, so point two is the limit for the inlet, so I'll put it in and tighten it up until I can't move it and then I'll back it off from there. So exhaust we need a 14 thou or point three six. So that's that one there. Now we just rotate the engine a full 360 degrees. Oh, that's an awesome spot to sit on. Really like the choice of seating. Okay, so now we've kind of lined it back up, but I'll show you the rock. So now our mark is lined up. Okay, now we do the other ones. The reason you sort of see me go back and forth there like a few times is just so like in case I'm holding it funny or there's a weird spot on the feeler gauge because sometimes if you just do like bloop bloop it can feel tighter or looser than what it actually is so I sort of just sit there and just go back and forth for a little bit. Okay so now I'm going to do the intakes so we'll go back to our 8 thou point two. My camera died, classic, but I just put the four bolts back in the rocket cover. That'll be all coming off again. As you can see, that's a lot quicker. If you guys have any questions, please drop them down below. If it is your first time doing something like this, still I recommend having a qualified mechanic with you or somebody who's at least done their own valves a few times. Be an overseer of your work just to, I guess, have another set of eyes double checking things because at the end of the day, this is kind of important if you screw it up but it is a simple process i do try and explain things in a more simpler way i try and break it down a little bit more so that anybody can understand it <laughs> i don't know if i did that very well in this video but yeah let me know you gotta come say hello come on how did you find that was that helpful did you enjoy that what did you learn he's a pretty boy Okay, 
I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. Open up my heart and you'll find you don't ever have to look too far. You don't have to cover up your smile.